Okay, I'll uh, get started. So, uh, one thing I want to discuss before we uh, get started today is the project. So, some of the deadlines are you need to form uh, teams uh, ASAP. If you haven't, uh, how many of you have already done so? This is not the audience I should be talking to, but there's there are 15 uh, students who are taking the class for uh, officially, so there should be five teams. So far, we have four students, one team missing. Uh, the lab will is open for uh, you to use. I will give you the relevant information, but you can use it through the next three weeks. So today is week six, week seven, week eight, and on the Friday of week eight. So on the Friday of week eight, that is May twenty fourth, before all of you take off for uh, the Memorial uh, Day weekend, we'll gather on a hopefully a sunny afternoon. And you know, tell these panels out that you will make and uh, evaluate them. Okay, so keep this uh, date in mind. Hopefully, we'll do it at the same time slot we have for the class around 4 p.m. <coughs> okay, but do please do make plans to get out on that weekend. It's a long weekend uh, after May 24th. Okay. So Raisul prepare, has prepared some instructions. He'll also email it to you maybe. The lab is open. It's in uh, Packard 004. This is the key code for you to get in. You can enter this punch in this key code and get in anytime uh, uh, during the day or during the night. If you do go in the night, you need to have uh, access to Packard. If you don't, just send Raisul an email. If you need access, we'll uh, email it to the person who controls that. And there's some cardboard boxes over there which you can use. Then the storage bin. Uh, let's see, there's two soldering stations. There's an illumination source which you can use to measure the efficiency of the set. And uh, each group can collect their uh, cells from Raisul. Uh, these are cells like these, these are three inch by six inch sets and uh, multi crystalline. And he'll be also holding office hours uh, on Thursday inside the lab, so that's a good good time to catch him if you want to have questions. I might drop in uh, once or twice as well. So, uh, let's see. These cells are brittle, so you know when you get them, make sure you know to place them in a nice. If you bend them, they'll break. And uh, please don't break them. Uh, for the project, I would, uh, you know, it's pretty much a, you have a open uh, canvas, you can uh, take it whichever way you want it. Some good practices that I'll suggest is do characterize the cell before you start putting them together into a panel. Me measure the efficiency. Just don't go by the spec sheet. You might find that, you know, things like for each of the cell, measure the efficiency, measure the short circuit current, measure the open circuit voltage, and then accordingly bend them such so that your panel has maximum efficiency. Again, panel design, we don't give you any instruction. You are free to choose uh, whatever design you want. You have the only uh, common factor you have is each of you has 25 cells, and it's an odd number that uh, is intentionally given to be odd for a reason, and uh, you, know, you can think about why how to optimize this panel which has 25 cells. And then again, one thing you need to decide on, and that decision would be, can only be made once you know the efficiency of your panel, that whether you want to use tracking or not. So we have given you some guidelines, you know, but this decision to track or not to track has to be made by you, that do you want your panel to use tracking also 1D tracking or 2D tracking? There's a cost associated with uh, each of these things. You can think of novel ways to you know, invent your own ways of tracking, which is cheaper. And we encourage you to do that. And just give us the reference. You know, If you think you can do tracking in a lower cost, um, you can do that. But give us the reference. You know, We have given you some reference where we have taken these numbers from. Uh, but Again, it's it's more or less you know, free to use your creativity. I remember uh, in one of the previous years, one person, for example, had used this Fresnel lens that you get. 
and these are like old TVs or uh, you know old uh, uh, television boxes. They have these uh, Fresnel lenses, and they place them on a panel just to you know, give them some concentration. Uh, so things like that, quick hacks, creative ideas. You are more than welcome to try them out. And again, there's no penalty for failing, or there's no uh, there's no risk in trying all these. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions on, on the project? Have you formed a team for the project? JP, did you? Did you form a, like some, I mean, just catch people who have either two members or who want to form a team. Okay, so let me get started on the topic. Uh, of the lecture today, and I will cover uh, three things. One is wrap up the discussion on uh, multi-junction cells, then talk about this topic of recombination and uh, discuss you know what are the different loss mechanisms uh, that can occur in your cell, and then we'll talk upon we we'll start upon the topic of uh, of uh, ten frame uh, uh, cells from uh, next week and also the next class. So I want to introduce some physics which is needed to understand these uh, tensile materials. And all of them happen to be made up of amorphous uh, materials. So we want to introduce some more uh, physics for understanding these uh, amorphous materials. Okay. So let me wrap up uh, you know, the discussion on multi-junction cells first. So the last time we were talking about uh, concentrators. And I think I finished uh, showing you some videos of concentrators. And then we have the guest lecture from uh, Solar Junction. So let me show you one more video of uh, you know one more video of uh, um, of uh, of uh, one of these tracking systems. This has very quick feedback. You can see you know, even within each rotation, it's like very quickly calibrating where the maximum power point is. And like these are very fine rotation, each of being 0.5 angle or even lower. And uh, you can see it follows the position of the sun very closely. I think it has two. One is like this. The other one is, is okay. and then you see, you know, whenever there is wind or so on the panel, it becomes uh, it becomes flat. So that's something that Vijit also mentioned that you know, whenever there's a wind blowing, these panels typically, since they don't want to risk these, these are very high cost system, you usually just flatten them out whenever there's a. Uh, Whenever there's a you know, uh, turbulent or whether there's a, a high wind velocity, so these are the more common ones. They use these uh, Fresnel lens uh, on each of them. So each of them has a Fresnel lens, and uh, below that is that small, uh, small, uh, you know, small multi-junction cell. And it's quite amazing, you know. As you see the size of these multi-junction cells are this big, and this they can give you equivalent power of what a panel, uh, you know, this big or even a whole uh, set of panels uh, made of uh, silicon will get you. Okay, so the other thing which we haven't discussed, but uh, in too much detail, but it's very important uh, for the design of uh, these uh, multi-junction uh, or what is called as this concentrated photovoltaic CPV system, is the optics and uh, the optics that. Uh, is most commonly used the ones which we saw in this video as well is that you have each of these box which is uh, has a Fresnel lens uh, on the top and it uh, concentrates this light up to a concentration of 500 or 1000 x so even though you saw that the panel was uh, quickly moving you know since it's quickly moving and also since it's tracking this very high intensity of the sun every time it rotates this part which is you know uh, for which is following the sun it rotates on your cell so you, this might be your initial part but as this panel is moving or you know in each of this quick movement 
even if your angle changes by a few degrees this part will move along your panel so you know throughout the course of the day it will move something like this or every time you have a misfocus or every time you have a, a misalignment you your spot will move along the panel and move along this uh, small cell and that creates a lot of problem because it creates this ununiform illumination throughout your cell so some parts even though it's a very small chip some parts of it are getting light some part of it are not so there's a very high current density in some parts of the uh, of the cell versus you know some other parts of that small cell are not getting illuminated at all and so it requires a uh, it places a very stringent requirement to spread the current so there's a lot of focus on uh, designing these uh, grid lines which are placed on top of the cell so these grid lines which are placed on top of these multi junction cells they are uh, you know very fine grids and they are usually in a in a in a cell like these you'll see that these grid lines are you know you can see them they are very uh, spread out but in this case these are less than a micron apart in fact you know, in some places they are less uh, in a few hundred nanometers apart from each other and uh, no so you can't screen print like things which are you know on the dimensions of a uh, few hundred nanometers so you use the lithography remember i said lithography the word that you don't shout in a fab uh, in a in a silicon uh, uh, solar cell fab otherwise you get thrown out but since these systems have uh, very high efficiency and you are designing you know almost like a chip where it's this big of a cell you can get away with using expensive processes like lithography or you know implantation or whatever like other thing which you use in a conventional uh, uh, chip industry or in a conventional ic fabrication so these these cells do utilize uh, lithography for uh, making these uh, grid lines <coughs> and that's necessary because the amount of the current which is flowing you simply cannot have like grid line which are microns or you know few microns apart okay and so depending upon what kind of uh, concentrator system you're using sometimes you make these uh, things uh, square especially if you're using that uh, fresnel lens and you're concentrating this uh, to a square Sometimes people use disc and then they use uh, you know, they mount one cell over here and then use these circular cells. So again, these are size of uh, you can say you know, size of a big DRAM chip or size of a big flash chip, and uh, you size them accordingly depending upon uh, what kind of concentration you need. Okay. So again, I give you good references that uh, if you are inclined or if you are confused, you want to read up more. So a good reference to read up about uh, these multi-junction cells is this uh, handbook of uh, photovoltaics chapter 8. I have taken quite a lot of that material from this, uh, quite a lot of the material in the lecture from there. Another good uh, reference to read up, especially upon the fabrication, how what are the different schemes of growing these uh, metamorphic versus inverse metamorphic versus uh, lattice matched is uh, this handout I've uploaded. And then we haven't talked much about the optics, but if you want to read more about concentrator design, you can uh, use this reference again. Okay. So uh, we have talked about you know multi-junction cell quite a lot. Hopefully. You guys are feeling confident, so I want to you know quiz you a little bit, you know, test the water a little bit, see how much you are learning. So I had this you know very neat idea, or at least I thought I had a very neat idea, but uh, you know let me get your opinion on it. So you usually use um, when you make a multi-junction cell, right? You make these two cells, one for absorbing, say this one is for absorbing blue photons. Then the other one is for absorbing, say, a lower energy photon. So this one is for absorbing a lower energy photon. So we usually make a PN junction in each of them, right? So we make a PN junction here, we make a PN junction here. And uh, as a result of this, I have to you know, suffer further more complication. I have to introduce a tunnel junction over here, right? So I had this brilliant idea when I was first studying about these cells that you know, why not make a design like this where you have uh, 
you know, it's it's uh, multi-material, but it's only one junction, right? So I've made 